December 23rd, 1888, Vincent Van Gogh cut his ear off. Oh, nice. Mailed it to a hooker. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Cartier. I am Miss Alto. I thought, wait, what? I thought you were going to be Frosty the Snowman. (laughs) <laughs> that's my real name i can't i use fake names i'm miss alto with miss alto i don't know but i hope you don't stand under me with someone miss <laughs> ha 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 miss alto <laughs> that's like that game what's that game called oh yeah i see it on like um, yeah TikTok it's like or whatever. pronounce that word mm-hmm. and this here is frank um wearing bow style number 11 yes only two more he's uh, got the classic. Not two more. One more. One more. Yeah. So the classic bow tie kind of ish on now today. Mm-hmm. Um, I should have worn white. I'm kind of feeling out of the loop, but that's all right. I kind of like standing out. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. How you guys doing, guys? Guys, guys, it's the best day of the week. It's Thursday. It is the oh man twenty third. It's the twenty third of December. Wow. Does it get more Christmassy than, than today? It's winter. It's here, yes, it is. It's winter, officially. It's the 52nd. You know what? It's the 52nd Thursday. Yesterday was December 22nd. It was the 51st. Our first podcast of the week. Yeah. We talked about a couple things. We talked about bolts. Yeah. We talked about um. it was mechanical engineering it's day. It's the 51st Thursday. Sorry. Not the 52nd. We talked about mechanical engineering day. We talked about a lot. Power. What we didn't talk about, which mm-hmm. is strange for us because we like to just point out the obvious, is Tuesday was the first day of winter. I know. We're, we're kind of like a weather channel. <laughs> we are. <laughs> if anything, you can just always watch the first five minutes of us. Yeah. And yeah. You'll, you'll get Philadelphia weather. Right. But um, yeah, we didn't talk about it being winter. We didn't. Winter's officially it, here. It, it um, gosh, the... The sunset is at like four thirty p.m. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. it was the shortest day, which I was complaining about because I like to complain here on our Christian podcast. But this is why I hate days ending early. Okay. Normally, you might think, "Oh, there's not enough sunlight." Yeah. Oh, it's always dark, which I don't like. I do love sunlight. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things is sunlight. That's not it. It's when I'm driving. Uh, during the day, usually I'll do my morning stuff at home and then I'll go out and drive around. I don't know, go to the store, go to the yeah. gym. It's the sun is always setting. And what I don't like about that is it's always in my eyes. And I get very frustrated because it like, how do I put this? The how sun do, is always setting. The sun's it's like almost, you, you, you go out at 2 p.m. and the sun's I see what you're saying. down, down in the sky. I see what always you're saying. in my eyes. Yeah. And it, it now coordinates with, um, rush hour oh yeah and so i get a little frustrated a little agitated i get my my spirituality tested my patience tested thank in, you hashem in rush hour but rush hour plus sun in my eyes makes spencer a very angry boy in well, the spencer Christmas season. needs to count his little blessings which <sighs> is you could also have snow glare happening oh. a- a- along with those things because that happens yeah but i think i like times. snow so snow glare no i don't like snow glare when but... you're talking about what you're talking about the sun and the driving and the thing all you need net then is to have see how i'm glowing yeah. like the white ground to be but here's the thing about it. i've always said this i've said i don't see any point of winter besides snow like yeah. if it's cold i want it to be cold for a reason i want to get something that i don't get when it's just a sunny day out right and it's cold. It's almost unfair. It's like, it's winter, but it, I can't even, I, the sun's out. I can't enjoy it. Yeah. I kind of like a snowiness. It's like, this is why it's cold. Mm-hmm. Let me make a snowball. Make a snow angel. <laughs> Let me make a snowman. Um, but when it's just cold and dry and, and sunny and the sun's just in my eyes and I keep making, t- we live in a very windy, bendy living situation. So it's like. If the sun, if you turn left when the sun's out of your eyes, you turn. And so I'm, I'm there with my, my, uh, what visor. is that called? Visor. visor. And I'm, I'm clicking it to this side. Yeah. Clicking it to that side. I'm, I'm, I'm weaving. I'm, I'm curving. Just trying to get Have that. you ever thought of sunglasses? 
Huh. You never really think about sunglasses in the winter, but... You do. That's a good point. Yeah. You could do that. And also, you could thank Hashem for... Who's Hashem? God. Oh. It's my new thing. Okay. What's what language? Jewish. Okay. Well, I, and when I say Jewish, is it Hebrew? I don't know. But I hear I hear Jewish people saying, thank you, Hashem. So now I'm saying it. Thank you, Hashem. Okay. For these opportunities to practice your patience. The power of patience is peace. <laughs> We've been saying that since since the the first podcast. Yes. Not the first. It was probably like the 20th. We, we figured it out. Yeah. The power of patience is peace. Um, yeah, so that's my that's my little venting spiel. Well, you can also be optimistic now because it's only getting brighter. It's only getting brighter. That's, slowly but surely. That's the thing about it. Don't call me Shirley. Surely you can't be serious. Um Yeah, I, I feel like one of the reasons we forget is I think that this the winter solstice, you know, that, that darkest day, first day of winter, it always it seems more out of place than all the other ones. Like Really? I feel like it has felt like winter. Like something about like as soon as it turns December, it's like December 24th. Oh, it's the start of winter. It's like, oh, right. It wasn't already winter. I know. Like, I think the fall one's good. You have it in September. That's all right. Um, spring one's good. March. Boom. Yeah. Summer. June 10th or June whatever, 21st. I don't know. Perfect. Yeah, June 21st. But December 20, it just seems a little late in the game. Even my sister, her birthday was last week, December 14th. And I think it was only three years ago that we all harassed her and said, ha you're a fall baby. Right. Because she grew up always imagining December 14th. Right. I'm a winter baby. Right. So that's just my, that's my little winter spiel. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to remember that because I'm um, not that, but I have to remember it's only getting brighter now. And that's something to be and happy wait, about. Are you a winter baby? I know. Weird, right? That's weird. March 6th. You would think I was a spring baby. That's I'm May 11th. I'm safe in spring. <laughs> I'm, I'm right smacked out of the middle. Yeah. In the summer, when, when they say, you, we've now passed the brightest point of the year, and now it's only going to get darker. darker. I hate when they say that, because like yeah. you said, it's June 21st. Yeah. It's like, the first, so it feels, it's like the start of summer. Yeah. Why are you doing the, this to me? The, the peak of summer? It's a little bit whack, wacky. I know, but... To make us feel better when that is when this happens, which is... Yes, it's only getting brighter. From, hey, you know, what's it called? Highs and lows, mountains yeah. and valleys mountains and, and all that. I have some December 23rd um, important days. Okay, let's hear them. Um, in 1688, King James II fled to France. Um, do you know who King James II was? Was he the King James Version Bible or is that King James I? I have no idea. Um, probably not the King James Bible because King James II was the last Catholic monarch of England, Scotland, and Ireland. Oh, so I would imagine the first one would be. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Who I don't know, but I'm sure that was uh, Protestant. Yeah. I guess. This is interesting, isn't it? Because you, you always assume There's English one. monarchs are have oh. been Protestant. Yeah. forever it's like that was it's always their thing it's the protestants yeah um like that's their whole you know issue with the old ireland right and, and so it's it's interesting to think like remember hey remember your roots speaking of ireland um december 23rd 1920 the government of ireland act the home rule act passed which partitioned ireland um I'm not exactly clear, but it has something to do with, you know, how Northern Ireland is part of so the, the UK. The, yeah. The United. What is it called? United Kingdom. No. Oh. The, what, what is Free Ireland called? Republic of the Ireland. Republic of Ireland. Right. But it used to be called um, Ireland, the Free State of yeah. Ireland. Um, and I just, this was just a funny quote to me. The prime minister at the time when they made that act has had has said this the irish temper is an uncertainty and dangerous forces like armies and navies are better under the control of the imperial parliament so this <laughs> this act gave uh the republic of ireland um free rule yeah. but but he was like but you're going to use the british army and navy because you're just your temper is not to be trusted <laughs> uh, you know what probably fair <laughs> <laughs> no it is not fair no, how dare you um, what else do we got? We got December 23rd, 1888, Vincent Van Gogh cut his ear off. Oh, nice. Mailed it to a hooker. Okay. Well, I don't think 
Well, that's what it says. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, like, if I think he was in love with her, right? I don't know. It doesn't say that. It just says, Vincent Van Gogh cuts off his left ear with a razor after an argument with fellow painter Paul Gauguin and sends to a prostitute for safekeeping. It's very nice. You want to cut off the part about the hooker? Because it's not nice to tell rumors. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to keep this whole thing, actually. <laughs> is, it is it a rumor or is it true? No, I mean, I'm, I'm sure her occupation was... Um, you sex know, work sex work but what i'm saying is it's not the important part it's not the important part it's like would you say and send it to a seamstress or it's like why can't we just give her a name oh because it's more like headlining yeah, yeah. it's like that's all she was mm -hmm. she was so much more than that to old vincent no she, she must have been she was he also he trusted her trusted because he her. said for safekeeping and finally we'll tell you that december 23rd 1954 the first human kidney transplant is performed in boston Massachusetts. Imagine me the first person to do that. That'd be kind of scary. To get, no. Well, yeah. Scary, but also, thank you, Hashem, because I'm guessing before that, they would just say goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, your kidney failed? <sighs> Could never be me. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, that's cool advancements in science. It's so great. I know two people. Um, a good, my good friend in Trinidad, her son had a successful kidney transplant from his brother. Oh, and really? Wait, I thought you only had one kidney. You have two kidneys. Yeah, of course you do. And our Ooh. mailman, Mailman Jerry. Mailman Jerry. He gave his kidney to his brother. Oh, man. that's Is that not the definition of just good Christian love? So you'll give your kidney to one of the twins? Well, they have each other. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would I step on any toes there? I don't want to, you know, <sighs> hey, let, let the twi twins be twins. Right. <laughs> Even though I don't think they both share the same blood, so... I think if the one got it, I'd have to give it. Oh. And then if the other got it, you'd have to give it. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. We we too are opposing we both, blood we both types. We'll have to give one of our kidneys. Oh, okay. Which one would you give, your left or your right? I'm going to give my left. I'm going to give my right. I think my right's already pretty crowded. Okay. I think I have a very... I don't think you choose, but if we could. I'd give my right. Let's give I'd my right give my kidney. right hand for that. I know that... I'd give my right hand, isn't that what they say? Right arm, right foot, right eye. My left foot, I think, is a movie with Daniel Day-Lewis. All right. Would you give one of your eyes to someone? I don't want to talk about this. It's okay. so creeping me out. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. Okay, okay. I'll give you anything you need. Okay. Okay? Thanks. And now Will you give me your record. brain? Now this if is record. If you give someone your brain, are you? would you be able to still be you? Moms do give their brains to their kids because there's something called mom brain and um, it's truth. <laughs> It's the truth. When you were pregnant and, and literally the baby is being pulling from you. Yeah. And um, it was something. Uh, I'll have to look it up because I don't think you'll even be able to find it. It was something about people always refer to mom brain, especially as soon as you have the baby. You're like, you're like real confused and foggy. And I don't mean, I don't mean in the hospital. I mean, like you have a three month old oh. and you forgot like, oh, I forgot about that. Or where is this? Or. And it's called mom brain, but um, I read recently that it's not just because you're overwhelmed. It's because literally you gave some of your brain to your baby. You're welcome. That's why I ended up you're where welcome. I did. <laughs> you're welcome. All right. Well, that's that. It's any time. other any other special days or is that it? No it's, holidays. It's t it's time. I think no, because... I wear this. I just feel so inclined to like. Why though? I feel like I'm. I, I feel like a, a nosy neighbor. Like I I feel like um there was there's like a fire engine outside <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and I walk out and I'm like. Oh, why oh. though? I don't know. It's just like it's a, like I think it might be the fabric because it's soft, so I like to touch it, mm -hmm. and then I just kind of pull it close. Like, oh, what do you think happened? Oh, are you also in another country when this <laughs> happens? All right, I think we should dance. We should dance, guys. It's Thursday. You know what time it is? It's Walk Through Thursday. Roll the intro, please. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz Walk Through Wednesday just begun. What's up, guys? It is Walk Through Thursday, my favorite time of the week. Yeah. Your favorite time of the day. <laughs> and, um, yeah, what we do on Walk Through Thursday is we open up the Bible. Uh, where's... I don't even need to make a, a, a clip art thing. <laughs> Bible's open. 
Bible's open. And what we do with that open Bible... Oh, is this saved for a reason? No, okay. not for me. What we do is we open up the Bible and we pick a verse, any verse, and we walk through it quite, quite literally. Um, we break it down. We slow it down. We try to find a deeper meaning in a single passage yeah. rather than trying to understand a whole book, understand the whole... We boiled the whole Bible down. We said it means it's all about love. Bible soup. Bible soup. We boiled it down. Bible soup for the soul. It's all about love. All right? And you can break stories down and say, what's the whole story about? Yeah. This, we choose one verse and we say, what does each word mean in it? And it can mean something different to you. Does that mean you're wrong? No. If you don't agree with what we say, does that mean we're wrong? Maybe. But no, it doesn't because the Bible is a living word and you, you know, get... the teachers say is like, no wrong answers. No wrong answers. What you get out of it is what you need from it at that moment, right? So, um, yeah, without further ado, let's do I, just... Do I look like a rock star with this on there? Oh, no. Okay. No, you yeah. can keep it. I like, well, to, I like that, to play you with sh- it. You should decorate your... Th- oh, that's what, that would have been a cool thing. We decorated our... Christmas tomorrow. Microphone stands. Christmas Eve. Okay. Oh, we should have a competition. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Okay. All right, back to the Bible. So, yeah, so without further ado, let's get into it. Um, so, what are we reading today? <laughs> now you're doing it on purpose. Now I'm doing it on purpose. Oh, man, we got a long one today. Got a long one today. Oh, you put my name at the top. Is yours different? Yeah. Okay. <sighs> we are reading Isaiah. Mm-hmm. Isaiah, we got, you got to love Isaiah. Yeah, we do. I think we've done him a couple times. Yes, we have. Um, and we are looking at Isaiah 19, 11 to 13. Mm-hmm. Okay, we got we got a lot of words here. Any kind of um, preface, or we're just gonna get into it. Okay, well, I get, should I tell you the reason I chose it? Yeah. Okay, the reason I chose it is because it has the word wise men in it. Ah. And, but it's not the wise men that everyone is going to be thinking about during Christmas, which okay. is the Magi, which is the New Testament, which is the very famous the, in the, the nativity the, scene, yeah. which they bring the gifts Christmas to Jesus. Story. Christmas story. So I thought it would, you know, I just always need to be different. So I found wise men in the Old Testament that are not the wise men that everyone is talking about this week because I go against the grain. Okay. Well, and, and and you do so aggressively? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the officials of his own are nothing but fools. The wise counselors of Pharaoh give senseless advice. How can you say to Pharaoh, I am one of the wise men? a disciple of the ancient kings. Where are your wise men now? Let them show you and make known what the Lord Almighty has planned against Egypt. The officials of Zon have become fools. The leaders of Memphis are deceived. The cornerstones of her people have led Egypt astray. Okay. I just picked it for the wise men. You just picked it for the wise men? Yes. Okay. Um, Do we know what they're talking about? Uh, it, it's um, you know, God is mad at uh the people. You God know, in the Old Testament, at the people. You know, in the Old Testament, the um, the different times where He says, uh, "This is um this wrong what is you're doing." The story of a girl, right? Yeah. And then it goes on to say how wrong you are, and then it's going to <laughs> no, I'm serious. And then it's going to end up that um, then they turn to God and they're rewarded. But it's just one of those um. One of those you're getting in trouble statements, okay. but are you on something or you were just looking up Isaiah? I was just looking up Isaiah, old Isaiah. Um, I just, I just thought we could look at it. And what I was thinking when I saw it, even besides that, it was just the wise men. Um, it says, uh, where are your wise men now? Let them, sh- let them show you and make known what the Lord Alm- almighty has planned. And it just made me think of current day, you know, bringing the Bible story to current day. Yeah. And so many times I'll say like, oh, he's so smart. You'll name mm. the most smartest person in the, on earth or you'll name um, the most clever businessman on earth at this time. And, and we are like, are they wise? And what does really, what does a wise man mean? And why aren't you wise? Yeah. What makes you not wise? All right. Let's get into it. The officials of Zone are nothing but fools. The wise counselors of Pharaoh give senseless advice. Right. So just what you were saying, it's talking about people at a high standing 
the people that are in these officials ears and saying that they, they don't know what they're talking about. Right. Um, and yeah. Yeah. So the officials say you were thinking of like a president, right? So the officials are full and then the president's council is giving senseless advice. So, and, and this is not to say that that is true across the board. I think, it, I think, are we talking just about differentiating between like business wisdom and spiritualism? Well, I think what we are doing is, and we always talk about this, is understanding that humans are fallible. Mm -hmm. And there is a danger, even like in the in real world application, right, um, by uh, senseless following, mm. but in also spiritual learning. Right. You, like, I think the Bible, it never tells you to have blind faith to, to men. Right. And a lot of the times there's this these corrections made of the wise men, the Pharisees, the sorcerer who are, oh, we know, we know. And, and it's like you don't know. And, and we'll, we'll get to it. Yeah. Uh, in, in a bit. But it, it's telling. It's always, I think, referring to. God has a plan. Right. And there will always be people who will tell you what God's plan is. Right. And you can't always trust that. Yeah. How can you say to Pharaoh, I am one of the wise men, a disciple of the ancient kings? So that's now I, I think it, it's, it's talking to those wise men. And, and you could you could bring this to spirituality. We all we have a huge love and adoration towards anyone who promotes the Bible. Right. But we also have you and I have a careful You were cautious. We have a we have a call mm -hmm. we have a, ca a caution to people who say I can speak for, right? So it's right. Uh, I you when someone says I am the wise man, a disciple of the ancient king is like That's not enough. That's not enough. Right. Like, like, like you you can't just like you can't just take someone who says well, because I know. Well, look at me. I'm at a higher stature than you. Right. I, I know more than you. I, I'm closer to God than you. Right. I, yeah, I, I can I can repeat back the verses better. I can <laughs> repeat. Yeah, the verses better. Where are your wise men now? Let them show you and make known what the Lord Almighty has planned against Egypt. And they can't. And and so that's that that's, goes back to what I was saying of the God's word is the only word. And, and so... <clears throat> At this point, you know, God was angry. Oh, my God. <laughs> God, was, God was I didn't like, give you the advent. Oh, well, let's wait till the end. Okay. Afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it's, call, it's calling the them on their hypocrisies, right? Because yes. right before it, it says, I, they're saying to the Pharaoh, I'm one of the wise men, a disciple of the ancient kings. Like, look, look at right. me. And, and it's, okay, well, where are they now? Let let them tell you what what God has planned. Yeah, and they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to right because they they were always living with through their own words and not God's right. The officials of Zone have become fools. The leader of Memphis are deceived. And 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 so saying deceived there, I feel that there's also people who are not they're they're confused or they're not the best they're not the wisest leader not because they're they're uh, intentionally doing that but what if they're deceived what if you're listening to someone yeah. who's been deceived themselves yes yeah. and, and that and that goes to uh we've talked about this forever but the the dangers of spreading words like your own your own agenda right rather than god's because you, someone will take it for fact. Someone will take it for fact and then spread it themselves. Like you right. said, like this is the leaders of Memphis. Right. So you have the wise men and then it's like, or the officials and then you have the, the leaders and they're going out and they're saying, well, I heard from the wise men right. who they know, right? Like right. They, are, they are a disciple of the ancient kings. And then it's just this trickle down effect. Yeah. You know, this like one turns to two, turns to four. And that's like what this is a challenge to. It's like, mm -hmm. you can't, just believe things because then you could believe anything. There's so many atrocities and bad things 
have been done in, in world history in the name of God, right. in the name of the Bible. Was it from God? I would argue no, not at all. Right. But it's that following of, well, he said it and he knows more than me. And it's, it's, it goes to the importance of personal faith, personal belief, right? Like I, you know, read the Bible and, and I feel emboldened to challenge things because of it. But when mm-hmm. people don't have that ability or, or have more of that blind faith, they can be subject to believing whatever right. someone wants them to believe. Yeah. The cornerstones of her peoples have led Egypt astray. When I see that, I think of what in modern speak, we say the pillars of the community. Mm. So I would think that a cornerstone of the people is also a pillar of the community. Yeah. And a pillar of the community is somebody that everyone recognizes as very righteous, yes. upstanding and um, reputable. And so you have these people who people just automatically feel that they are to be followed and here they've led them astray. Like we talked about the prostitute with um, Vincent van Gogh. We did. And you said she would never be considered a pillar of the community or a cornerstone of the people, but she's very likely to have been trustworthy, yeah. um, you know, and he, he trusted her. So it's the people who get the automatic reputation of being trustworthy aren't yeah. necessarily. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and it's led Egypt astray. And I think, you know, now that we've read the whole thing, the importance of this is such. We think very easily that, especially in the Bible, you can, t- okay, listen, as long as we're not worshiping the false eye, like, we can get deceived to thinking we will know if we're being led astray right. away from what the Bible means. It seems so clear to us. Like, right. Okay, I will know, you know, like the second, you know, someone, Very easy, someone yeah. tells me to kill someone or to start worshiping a calf, I'm, I'll, I'll pump the brakes, but right. that's not happening. But there's a lot of minute things that we don't notice yeah. that, that are leading us astray when we believe like, oh, wait, this isn't bad. This is a normal thing. Right. And, and you would be surprised to, to find out that it's like, it's not, uh, that's not what the Bible ever told you to do. Right. That's not what they wanted. And personally, you know, in the beginning, when we were introducing Walk Through Thursday, we said, um, we boiled the whole Bible down and, and it's love. It's all about love. Right. God is love. Right. And so I think that's, for me, that's the easiest distinguishing factor on, am I being led astray or not? There's a lot of things that you'll, you'll see people in, in religion mm-hmm. or you can make this on a on a earthly systematic if you're looking at politics or whatever um which it applies to everything mm-hmm. and that's if you're being strayed away from love from from the simplest like love god love your neighbor right. love yourself that that's it so that's all it takes to be led astray right, right? if you are going to um What's the word when you, to a thought, like if you're going to agree with an idea, subscribe. If you're going to subscribe to the idea that, that God is love and, and that's what it's all about. Anything that causes you to, to, you know, to judge, to hate, to condemn. That's the red flag. Which, which you'll, you'll see it a lot. And, and a lot of the times, you know, in the name of love is not the same as love. Right. right. And so, any and so that's, that's the way I gauge it. Right. If it's about love any any philosophy religion belief i yeah believe it's it, it's divinely inspired because god is love and if there is a tinge of like well, that doesn't seem so loving like that right. that's that's what i i sort of draw the line of yeah personal agenda versus mm-hmm. a wise man who is spreading the word of god we say a lot consider the source consider the source and you'll so that's a normal thing to say. And you'll say like, oh, I heard this. And then it's like, consider the source because you're not, you don't trust the person who said it. But you should also not just blindly, you know, if, so say you consider the source. Well, the bishop told me that. Yeah. Still, like what you said, if it's not out of love, then it's not something you should be subscribing to. Yeah, that's that's true. And that's what through Thursday's Advent time. Guys, we're, we're almost done with whole Advent. Oh, nice. Yesterday you said you wanted a food I know. advent gift. And uh, the one time you give it to me at the end of the show. I know. <laughs> well, that way you would have been chewing through. Awesome. An original beef stick. 
I was I was going to get your classic Slim Jim, which you which you, which you I think you like. I do like Slim. I like this though because you know why? It's different. Hundred percent grass fed. Oh come on! Come on! <laughs> come on! No preservatives. No added MSG. No added nitrates or nitrites. Beef raised without added growth hormone or antibiotics. So say the say the brand then, since you just gave it an advertisement. All right, this is Larissa's Kitchen Real Snack Solutions. Thank you, Larissa's Kitchen. Um, shout out to your meat sticks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll be back tomorrow, guys, for Fun Friday. Uh, let us know what you thought about this verse. If you're like, you guys are dummies. You guys ain't wise men. No. Christmas Eve is tomorrow, and you, they, they'll vote for our stand. Vote for our stands. We're going to see who has the nicer stand. Maybe we'll put a poll up on Instagram as well. But until then, peace. Enjoy your December 23rd. Um, it's a good one. Peace. Bye. Bye.